Hello everyone and welcome back to Cup of Java and our final week of AI, week eight. Today we are going to be talking about ethics and AI. Today's lesson is going to be a shorter lesson because I personally believe that this is a topic that you have to you have to research for yourself um, because it's very uh, subjective based on the person. But I will be talking about kind of a background um, and some instances in society today. So let's get on with it. So while ethics may open, while AI may open many exciting avenues, it also presents many ethical questions and challenges because it has so much potential. Some of these challenges include data privacy, bias in algorithms, and economic inequality. One specific issue um, that many of you may have heard of was Amazon and their AI um, that was sorting through resumes and how that that uh, sorter was the that AI was biased um, because of the data that was inputted. So if you ever have biased data, then your algorithm is also going to end up being biased and that can be very harmful in the long run. So there are many ways to combat this. One way is to make sure that your data is as objective as possible, because this is what your algorithm is training on. Um, the other way is to make sure that you have multiple people writing and constantly updating um, your algorithm. Because the more diversity of people that you have um, um, in writing your algorithms, the less likely there is to be a very clear issue in it. So basically, so now a big problem is um, human versus AI. And a lot of this has to do with deep fakes and being able to basically put a face on, uh, make up a face um, or put a face on a person in a video who's not actually that person. Um, and this is detrimental in many different ways, but it's also controversial because seemingly human things in the past, for example, art, um, or literature can now be written by AI. So I'm not gonna click on these links, but I would highly recommend that if you are interested, um, you click on these links. I personally think that the art is the coolest and it's AI designing art. Um, and I would really recommend um, looking at all, the, all of these links that are in the slideshow today. So I propose a question to you all now. Is AI the future? Do you think AI, AI will replace creative pursuits by humans, music, visual arts, literature, etc.? I'm gonna let pause and let you think about that for a moment. My personal opinion is that AI is not gonna replace the creative pursuits, but more change the way that we go about it. Um, it's gonna make the way that we create these things, the way that we create music and visual art and literature different, but it's not going to replace it. Um, similar to how um, machines in the past and computers have changed the way that we make music and the way that we write literature and we make art. I still, th I think that AI will also do the same, a similar thing. So, Isaac Asimov's three laws of robotics. What are these three laws and what do they have to do with ethics and AI? The first law is that a robot may not injure a human being through inaction. So allow a human being to come to harm. The second law is that a robot must obey the orders given to by the human beings, except when the orders would conflict with the first law. And the third, is that the robot must protect its own existence as long as the such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. So as you can see here, the first law always comes first, which is not injuring human through inaction. And the second law comes second and the third law comes third. So you follow this in order. So what does this have to do exactly with, with uh, ethics and AI? The trolley predicament. So, now with Tesla and self-driving cars, um, 
cars need to have some type of moral conscience. Um, not a conscience exactly, but a programmed conscience. Um, and this is whether when you're in a car um, and the people in your car, um, as you can kind of see here, um, if this car drives straight, it kills the people in the car. But if, if it swerves to avoid this um, barrier, then it kills the same amount of people, but just not in the car. So this link right here is to MIT's Moral Machine. This is a very interesting link. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to take you through 13 different possible scenarios. Um, so sometimes these are humans, sometimes these are um, dogs, sometimes there is a different amount of humans versus on the crosswalk versus in the car. Um, sometimes um, the, it's different ages or uh, different professions. Um, and this allows you to kind of look at your moral standpoint on what a self-driving car should possibly do um, in a situation like this. And there's no right answer, of course, um, but it's always interesting to see how your opinion compares to that of the general public um, and compares to what is being done today. So should we be concerned? Um, if you would like the link to this full article, Again, it is linked right here. Once you get um, the slideshow, you can click on it and I would re totally recommend reading the entire article. So um, here the article is talking about AI tools to detect COVID, but what happened was that some AI were found to be picking up on a text font used to label the scans. So fonts, um, fonts from hospitals with more serious caseloads became predica uh, predictors of COVID risk, not the symptoms itself, but the font. So this is an example of um, how this can be extremely detrimental, especially in this situation to a person's health. Um, a wrong use or a wrong measure um, can lead to people um, having wrong diagnosis. And in terms of COVID-19, that's, that's an extremely big deal. Um, so again, AI is a tool that we can utilize in order to make our lives easier and in order to, um, excite and encourage innovation, but it does come with some drawbacks, um, as we've discussed today. Um, and the biggest thing you can do is to figure out the best balance of, um, the benefits versus the drawbacks um, and figure out what is best for the majority of people um, and how to make your algorithm um, the least biased and the most objective um, and suit your needs, um, but also the needs of people around you. Um, so I would like to thank everyone for coming through the last eight weeks um, of AI. I am I hope that you guys have all learned something um, and I hope that you will use these videos and slideshows as references um, as you go on in your journey in computer science. Um, and I encourage you to go check out all of our other classes um, as well. Um, and yes, thank you so much. Uh, and I will see you all soon.